Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC 135. I'm going to run through the prelims real quick. <clears throat> James Tahuna versus Ricardo Romero. I'm going to take Tahuna. Mizugaki versus Cole Escovito. I'm going to go with Mizugaki. Junior Asunsao versus Eddie Yagen. I'm going to go with Asunsao. Then for the spike card, Nick Ring versus Tim Bosch. You know, I think Nick Ring lost his fight to Fukuda. Kudo was a good wrestler, was able to take him down. Tim Bosch coming down from 205. He's a huge guy for 185. I think he, he's going to do well at 185 after showing how well he could fight uh, against Kendall Grove. I think he's going to go in. He's going to take Nick Ring down and uh, beat him. Maybe a TKO. I don't know about that. Possibly. Next fight, Tony Ferguson versus Aaron Riley. You know... Tony's a pretty good fighter. He knocked out a lot of the guys on the show. Knocked out Ramsey and Jim. He actually wrestled with uh, one of my coaches. He He's from around my area. Uh, he's friends with like some of the people on my team. And I'm hoping he's going to pull off the win. And I think he has a possibility too. This is a good chance for him to prove himself maybe. I feel like Tony's going to end up either knocking him out or beating him by a close decision i feel like this is going to really be the fight that proves how good tony is and how far he's going to make it so first fight on the main card ben rothwell mark hunt you know a lot of people don't remember how good ben rothwell actually is or what he's done because uh he was in the ufc long he just got knocked out by Cain velasquez that's about all people really remember but the guy was an IFL champ, I believe. Uh, most of his losses are to UFC champions. He lost to Tim Sylvia, Arlovsky, Velasquez. I, th- I think uh, he's going to be able to out-wrestle Mark Hunt, just take him down, hold him down. It would be nice to see Mark Hunt just knock him out. That would be pretty sweet because I like Mark Hunt. But... I think uh, that Rothwell's going to end up taking the decision by just grinding it out and doing what he did to Gilbert Ivel. You know, he's a tough guy. He's beaten some tough guys. He's beaten Rodriguez, Christoph Sosinski, Roy Nelson, plenty of good guys in his, you know, back in the day. You know, I mean, the guy's got seven losses and like three or four of them are to UFC champs. And then... The next fight is uh, Nate Diaz versus Takanori Gomi. I was kind of expecting Gomi to be the favorite in this fight, but I think Nick D- Nate Diaz is, which kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, you know, Takanori Gomi, former number one lightweight in the world, pride champ. He was a good fighter back in the day, knocked people out. I think he's kind of fell off now. He's one and two in the UFC. You know, I think he has a chance to catch Nate Diaz, but I feel like that won't happen. Diaz brothers are hard to get knocked out. I swear, if you're watching a Diaz brother fight, just expect him to get dropped at least once while he's taunting the other guy and then get back up and do the same thing to the other guy. A couple of years back, uh, Nate Diaz actually fought Takanori Gomi when he was number one in the world. He ended up submitting him, but it got turned into a no contest because Nate fail, uh, Nick failed a drug test for marijuana, which is kind of stupid. <laughs> and then... Uh, for this fight, I think uh, Nate's going to use his reach and probably just keep, keep uh, Gomi at a distance and maybe get it to the ground and possibly guillotine or triangle choke. That's really the way I see it. I feel like Nate Diaz was, wasn't meant for 170. He was just too small for 170. Maybe if there was a, like a weight class somewhere in between, it'd be good, but he he mainly didn't want to fight at lightweight because of his training partners too. Like Frankie Edgar is the champ. They train together a little bit. And now, you know, he won't want to fight at welterweight because of all the big guys and the fact that his brother's coming to the UFC. And then uh, next fight, Travis Brown versus Rob Broughton. Don't really know much about Rob. Travis Brown, big guy, powerful, coming off a sweet knockout of Stefan Struve. You know, I don't know why they matched him up against Rob. Maybe s- should have matched him up with someone better. Well, not, I wouldn't say that Rob's bad, but, you know, someone who's gotten a couple more wins in the UFC. You know, 
way I see this going is uh, Travis Brown's probably just going to use his power, lay it on him, and probably knock him out. Because uh, he has, uh, Broughton hasn't been knocked out before, but I feel like he probably hasn't fought too many people that are as powerful as Travis Brown. But you never know. He could do the same back because he's a pretty powerful striker himself from what I hear. And then uh, co-main event, Matt Hughes, Josh Koscheck, two fighters I really like. You know, I feel like when if Hughes had fought Diego Sanchez, he would have had a better chance just because uh, he, Hughes would probably would have been the better wrestler. And he probably would have been able to take Diego down. But I don't think he's going to be able to take Josh Koscheck down. Koscheck, you know, national champ wrestler, powerful striker. I feel like, you know, people are talking about Hughes' his time being over. I think he can still fight, compete well. You know, he got caught by BJ Penn really after, what, a four-fight loss or a four-fight uh, win streak. And then all everyone's talking about, oh, he's lost it. Well, he's older, but I think he's still he can still stay competitive, but – it, it's just one loss, and it's the BJ Penn. But I also think that Koscheck is just going to be just a bad matchup for him right now. And uh, I feel like even though Koscheck hasn't fought in a while, neither has Hughes. But the thing is, Koscheck has very little time to train for this fight. I feel like he's a big guy. He should be able to make 170. Uh, he's going to have to spend a lot of – or he's going to have a tough time cutting possibly. Hopefully his conditioning will be great, but if he comes in the fight ready and prepared, I think he can knock Hughes out in the first or second round. And I think he's going to be able to keep it standing because Hughes isn't going to be able to take him down. You know. And then the next fight, John Jones versus Quentin Rampage Jackson. I liked, right before uh, John Jones was champion, you know, I really liked the guy. I was cheering for him when he, when he uh, beat Shogun. And then he's just, like, he's gotten so cocky ever since he became champion. He's, like, refusing to sign toy belts for little kids, saying that he had to work to earn his. Rampage Jackson, you know, slam slamming people back in pride, knocking people out. You know, people were talking about how, wow, Rampage, why aren't you slamming people anymore? Why why has he changed? And I was, watch, I was watching an interview with him in Boss Rude, and he's like, it's not that he hasn't tried to slam people, it's just, like, Everyone sees it coming now, you know. He was known for the slam. It's kind of hard to slam a guy who knows it's coming. And uh, I honestly hope Rampage wins this fight. I'm cheering for him. But I feel like John Jones is just going to take him to the ground, put Rampage on his back where Rampage is not that great off of. And I I don't know if he'll knock Rampage out. He might, like, TKO him with ground and pound, but... He won't one punch knock him out for sure, but I think he's gonna just take him down and hold him down. It'd be great to see uh, Rampage come back and just pick John Jones up, put him on the slam him onto the ground and just knock him out. That'd be amazing. Well, uh, those are my predictions. Uh, I'll be back to probably do a prediction video for UFC Live Cruz versus Johnson. Uh, I might also do some other videos. Just comment, rate, subscribe. Tell me anything I should change. Thank you. And goodbye.